show. It's July, it's the height of summer, and while this might not be the time of year that you usually think about crocheting a blanket, it is definitely time for the next installment in our 2021 calendar blanket, our Mighty Mile a Minute. We are doing a really cool lacy triangular stitch this month. This is a three row repeater. And I know, not all of you are using the same number of rows that we are, but don't worry about it. I'm gonna show you exactly where to put the border, no matter what row you end on. And it is still really good for practice. And no matter what row you end on, it's gonna look really cool. And there's a simple little nifty trick with this particular stitch that I'm gonna talk about a little later on. It's a little bit wider than some of our other stitches, but not by much. It's uh, 60 inches long with the border by about three and a half inches wide. So you should find that it's pretty much the same as the other ones. Maybe a little bit wider, maybe a little bit narrower. Depends on your tension. And this strip is going to size a little bit like the February strip, the V-stitch we did. So if you find it feels a little short by the time you've gotten to your last row, don't worry about it. It is going to stretch or shrink to match its neighbors because that join as you go border is magical. So, same yarn, same hook. Let's head on over to the craft table and we will stitch up the July stitch together. In order to make our July strip, you're going to want two different colors, one for your pattern and one for your border. You're going to want around 90 yards of each. I'm still using a medium size four acrylic yarn for my blanket. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle. You might want a clip or some stitch markers just to kind of keep, keep track of where you're at. And the same hook we've been using all along, a 5.5 millimeter, also known as an I or a nine, possibly a five in the UK. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. We're going to take our pattern color and we're going to start with a slip knot. We're going to chain 17. So this strip is a little wider than some of the other ones we've been doing. It's going to be three and a half inches wide or 8.75 centimeters and that's including the border. So when it's all said and done, three and a half inches wide but still 60 inches long. Once you have 17 chains, you're going to find the 12th chain from the hook. So we're gonna count back 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So there's number 12. And into that chain, we're going to double crochet chain one and double crochet. Chain three. You're going to skip the next four chains along the bottom of your foundation chain and you're gonna double crochet into this last chain on the end. So this is what you've got looks kind of like a big open space with a v-stitch in the middle. So chain 17, work a double crochet, chain one double crochet into the 12th chain from the hook, chain three, skip everything and then double crochet into the last chain right next to your knot there. That's row one. This is a three row repeater pattern. So you're going to be working three rows. This is a row one, it's what the first row looks like, but because it's based on our chain, or our foundation chain row, we're gonna come back to it in a little bit. So let's work on row two together. At the end of row one, you're going to chain four. This counts as a double crochet and a chain one space. Turn your work. And you wanna work on the double crochet stitch, the chain one space, and the double crochet stitch from the previous row. So that's all you're really concerned about right now. We're going to double crochet into the top of that first double crochet stitch. chain one. Into the chain one space, you're going to double crochet, chain one, and into the top of the last stitch from the previous row, you're going to get your hook through it there, double crochet, and chain one. So row two, 
double crochet, chain one, three times, worked across the stitch, the chain one space, and the stitch from the previous row. So you've got something that looks like that. Then you're going to skip over one, two, three chains, find the fourth one, and you're going to double crochet into that fourth chain away. So you have something that looks like this. So you've got three skipped chains here, you've got three skipped chains there, and you've double crocheted into the following chain. So that's row two. Row two is a slightly more extended V shape than the V in row one. Row three, we chain three to begin. This chain three counts as a double crochet. Turn our work. And this is the final full extension of this big lacy triangle stitch. So you're concerned with the stitch, the space, the stitch, the space, and the stitch from the previous row. So we're going to double crochet into the top of the first stitch, chain one, double crochet into the space, chain one, double crochet into the middle stitch, chain one, double crochet into the space, chain one, and double crochet into the top of the last stitch there. So you've got something that looks like that. You've got a definite triangular shape happening and everything's nice and open and lacy. On a row three, when you finish your last double crochet across the triangle, do not chain one. Instead, you're going to double crochet by skipping one little chain. So here's a little chain here. You're going to find the next chain. So skip a chain right next to the top of that stitch and you're going to double crochet into the second chain. There we go. Just grab any part of it you want. And so this is what you've got. You've got a double crochet, which is a chain three and a space, double crochet, chain one, four times, and then double crochet into the top of the last stitch. Don't chain. And then you're going to skip one chain down here and double crochet. So you start with three chains, counts as a double crochet. There's no extra chains. You work that extended sort of stitch all the way across the existing large V from the second row. And then no chains on the end. You just want to double crochet into the second chain away from the top of that last stitch. So you want little spaces in between. So those are the three rows that we're going to be repeating over and over and over. Now, if you wanted to, because it maybe is a bit difficult for you to sort of see where your um, spaces are or where the tops of chains are, you can use your stitch markers or your clips. Um, those are great tools to use if you feel you need to kind of keep track of a particular row or a particular chain or something as you go forward. If you can clearly see what you're doing, you don't have to worry about them. I often like to use these when I'm counting rows as I go because you do end up working pretty fast <laughs> in these mile minutes and sometimes it helps to just keep track of how many rows you've done. So that's rows one, two, and three. Let's do rows one, two, and three again together just so you can get an idea of how it looks. So I'm going to put my hook back in here. Okay, at the end of a row three, we're starting all over again with this little tiny V-stitch in a big stew of bar large open spaces. So we're going to chain six to begin a row one. A row one starts with six. Three of them count as a double crochet, and the next three chains counts as that big space that we want to have down here. Turn our work. Find the middle stitch. There it is right there, and right into that middle stitch you're going to work double crochet, Oops. There we go. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So a classic V stitch right into that center stitch. Chain three. And into the top of the turning chains, so you find the top of that, that stitch right there, grab the chain that's right next to it, and you're going to double crochet right into the top of it. So no skipping chains, just double crochet right into the top of that chain three. 
and we're back to this little V stitch in the middle of a big, two big open spaces. Row two, you've got these little guys to create, so it's the middle of that big lacy triangle. Row two starts with a chain four, chain three, that counts as the double crochet, chain one, that is a chain one space, you turn your work, you're concerned with the stitch, the space, and the stitch of the V stitch from the previous row. So into the top of the first stitch, you're going to work a double crochet, chain one, into the space, double crochet, chain one, and into the last stitch, double crochet, chain one, because we do want a little chain one space to mirror this one on the other side, you're going to skip three of those chains, so count three chains away, or three chains up from the bottom, skip three chains, double crochet into the fourth chain away from the v-stitch of the previous row, there we go, and that's the middle row, or a row two. Row three, you chain three to begin, that's it, only three chains, and that counts as a double crochet. Turn your work. We're concerned with the stitch, the space, the stitch, the space, and the stitch. We double crochet into the first stitch, chain one, into the space, double crochet, chain one, into the middle stitch, double crochet, chain one, into the space, double crochet, chain one, and into the top of the last stitch, just a double crochet, no chains, just a double crochet that finishes off that lovely big lacy lacy triangle effect, and then you're going to skip one chain away from the top of that last stitch in the previous row, so there's a chain we're going to skip, or you can count up one, two, three from the bottom, and you're going to double crochet into that third turning chain. There we go. So there's rows one, two, and three, rows one, two, and three, repeated all over again. I'm going to pull my hook out here and you can see that lovely open triangle effect happening. In fact, it almost looks a bit like arrowheads or arrows pointing in some direction. I really love this stitch. It's really cool. So there you go. You're just going to repeat rows one, two, and three over and over and over again. If, like we said in the beginning, you don't have a row count because you were doing a custom row number that doesn't quite work out to a perfect multiple of three, no big deal. Whatever row you end on is going to look just fine. Um, because we're going to still add the border. So these stitches, remember, we're just sort of practicing here, and all of these stitches can be used in their own little blanket. But this one is a repeater of three rows, so we get that really cool arrowhead or triangle effect going. So you're going to go ahead and repeat rows one, two, and three until you get to the end of row 78, or whatever row count you may be doing on your own, and I will see you up at the top. Two, three, four five, six. Alright, I have done 78 rows of our little lacy triangular stitch, so that's three rows makes one full triangle, and I just kept count of my rows with my little stitch markers, so I kind of knew where I was. I'm at row 78, so that is it. I'm going to snip my yarn, fasten off. Now don't worry if you feel this strip is a little shorter, if you were to hold it up against the side of your blanket, because this is going to probably size kind of like the February V-stitch pattern, but remember the join as you go border is magical. <laughs> and it will stretch or shrink your strip to match its neighbor. So you want to make sure you've got the right number of rows, and in this case, 78 is the magic row count. You can take a moment to weave in your tails, take out your stitch markers, grab your border color, and we will start the join as you go. We 
want to have our blankets with us now, we're going to be joining to the side of our June strip. So that means the first join is going to be up here in the top right hand corner space of the June strip of our blanket. You can use your July strip points down. So if your triangle is sort of point down or you can flip it and use it points up, in which case you would go all the way back to the first row. Your little tail will be over here and this would be your top right hand corner if you want to join with your triangles pointed up. So it's entirely up to you. Really all of these strips look cool whether they're upside down or right side up, but I wanted to bring that to your attention. So in case you want to play around with the shape of your pyramids or your triangles, whether they look like Christmas trees <laughs> or whether they look like pretty fans, almost like flocks of geese flying. I just love this strip pattern. It's so neat. Anyway, you decide what side you want to work and which direction you want your pyramids or your triangles to be pointed. Grab your border color. We're all going to start with a slip knot on our hook. Grab your strip. Whatever your top right hand corner space is, you're going to join your yarn with a slip stitch. And you know the drill. We're using the granny shell stitch pattern as our border. We chain three to begin. It counts as a double crochet. We finish off that first shell with two more double crochet in the same space. I'm going to leave my little tail to the back and work, weave it in later. There are no chains in between shells as we work across sides. We only work chains in the four corners and that's what gives us that little 90 degree turn. If you finished on a row three like me, you are going to work three double crochet into this middle stitch. So this is where your shell goes. If you finished on a row two, because you had a different or a custom stitch count, you're going to work your three double crochets into the middle of this stitch. And if you finish on a row one, you're going to work your three double crochet into the middle of your V stitch. If you are starting at the bottom, your three double crochets, that middle shell is going to go right into the bottom of your V stitch, or if you're looking at it like a Christmas tree, right into the top of the point. So that's where the middle stitch goes. No chains. We work three double crochet into the other corner space. And now we're going to chain to begin the corner, but we're also going to start the join as you go. So we chain one that starts the corner. I'm going to get my little strip out of the way here. Pick up your blanket, find the corner space. You can go hooks from the bottom or hooks from the top. It's up to you, but just make sure it's the same all the way down. And now I'm going to see if I can pair this up nice and neatly. We're going to chain one more to finish the corner. And before we're done with this space, we're going to work three more double crochets into it. You have 78 rows like me. You'll have 78 shells along each long side or however many rows you have because you're going to be working three double crochet or a shell into the edge of every single row all the way down. So just like every other month, before you move on, you sort of pair your shell up against the one from the other side, find the space in between three double crochet stitches or three double crochet shells and slip stitch to join. Move to the next big space. The spaces along rows one and row two of our repeater pattern are really easy to see. Uh, don't miss the one that's along the side of a row three because it's just a bit smaller. So three double crochet into the edge and then find the space in between shells on the adjacent strip and slip stitch to join. You know the drill. I will see you guys down at the bottom. Easily find all of our crochet tutorials. Type youtube.com slash jada and stitches into your web browser and we'll see you there. There's the top of our July strip and we've now joined three double crochets and a slip stitch in between shells on the opposite side all the way down. That brings us to the very bottom and you should have one big space left. Remember that this join as you go will stretch everything. So you'll be coming up to the last chain two space on your adjacent side and the last big space in your current
that strip. So we're going to go three double crochet into that big bottom space. And we're entering the corner. So we're going to chain one to begin the corner. We're going to do our last slip stitch into the corner space on the June strip. Chain one to finish the corner. I'm just going to turn this a bit sideways. And now we're working across the bottom of our strip. So I did it with the points at the bottom. So I'm going to finish a shell here. I'm going to do a shell here and I'm going to do a shell here. If you were doing it in the opposite direction so that your pyramids or your triangles were going in the other direction, you would do a shell in the top corner, a shell in the middle stitch and a shell in the other corner space. So just like we did uh, when we started the border, if you're doing it in the reverse of me, it's going to look like the top of my strip, your bottom, I should say. So three double crochet in each of those, so a big space, the middle bit, and the other space. Shell one, shell one, shell one. No chains in between. And then two chains to turn the corner, and we are working up the other long side. And it's just like the other side, only a lot quicker, because you're only working three double crochet in each space all the way up. This is a gigantic space. I like to leave my little tails at the bottom down here because sometimes I use them to just sort of pull everything into shape. So there's my shell, chain two shell. I have a bit of a big space here, but that's okay. I'm going to work three double crochet into the edge of each row, running up the other side now. And if I work over that short tail, I can kind of tighten up that space so that it looks just like the other one on the other side. Remember, no chains between shells. Remember that you're working around chain threes or double crochets, so you that third row space might be kind of small. So make sure you don't skip it. And I'll see you up at the top. Once you've worked three double crochet into the edge of every single row all the way up, you're going to work your last three double crochet into the same space that you joined your border color in and started with your first shell. And I love these scrap blankets because I've just had to add in a little extra yarn <laughs> to finish my border. You're going to chain two just to turn that last corner, find the top of your chain three and slip stitch to join. You can fasten off, weave in your ends, so you'll probably have two ends up here to weave in, and there you go. That is the July stitch, our lovely lacy triangle effect. Whether you have your triangles going one way or the other. And there we go. I have to model it every month and because it's the height of summer, it is really warm. <laughs> but once again, I have to say, even though it's a blanket, it sure does make an absolutely gorgeous wrap. I might just do this down the road for a wrap. I don't know, just saying. Which stitches do I use? Do I use them all? Do I use just one? Do I use three? I don't know. That's the fun of a blanket like this. You have all of these fun little stitch strips that you can decide how to mix and match no matter what you like. Ah, the fastest, the slowest, do you go with the widest, do you go with the skinniest? I'm not sure. I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed working on the July strip along with us this month. And we will see you soon here on the Jaded Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a great week. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.